In order for us to understand the events that take place later in the game, we need to understand as much as we can about the prologue. We know we start off in the living room of a house, standing in front of a static TV, surrounded by solo cups, bongs, and liquor bottles. There is even a picture of our son on the wall, with the other half of the picture missing. We're going to call this person Dan, because even though I believe this person is our son, I've been told over and over and over and over and over that this person could be our younger brother. And even though I'm pretty sure he's not, to appease the masses, we'll just call him Dan. It appears this house has been lived in for quite some time, but by who? Is this really our home? Or are we simply staying here for the moment? Entering the other room shows us a bulletin board with three pictures, a map of Golrood with the date of July 16th, 2020, and an article with the title, Wasted, 24-7. Continuing to look around, we can find an empty rifle case, more solo cups, a face-down picture frame, and copious amounts of prescription bottles on the top shelf of the cupboard. Next to the front door is a note written in red, I'm going with or without you, with something else scribbled out at the top. Clearly, Dan is wanting to leave and is willing to do so without us, but why? As we head upstairs, immediately to our left is another picture frame face down. Who is it that we're trying not to see? More prescription bottles can be found in the bedroom, but as we attempt to head into the bathroom, we see that it's blocked off with wood and boxes with the VHS tape sitting at the bottom. The VHS is titled No Sight. Continuing to break through the boxes and wood, we can make our way into the bathroom where we find a bathtub that's been sealed shut. Breaking the seal, we can spot streaks with a red hue at the bottom. Is this blood? Heading back down to the living room, we can watch the VHS tape on the TV. It shows Dan practicing with a rifle, shooting at targets and getting excited when hitting one. As we leave the house, we can see an RV to our left and another car to our right. This one we're able to drive. Shortly after leaving the house, however, we can hear the RV start up and then begin to drive away, revealing Dan as the driver. Before we start the chase after Dan, we have the option to investigate the backyard. Back here, we can find more solo cups, the targets we've been using, and a water tower. Proceeding further beyond the wire fence, we can actually find a burial site with a shovel next to it. As we start digging up the site, we notice that it's a body, a female body, and it's naked? Upon examination of the body, we can see a large laceration on the stomach and what appears to be a gunshot to the head. The body also isn't horribly decayed, indicating that it could have been buried fairly recently. Did we know this was here? Better yet, did we do this to her? The game never clarifies if the player and Dan are good or evil, which leaves the possibility that we could have robbed and killed her for both her supplies and shelter. She could have also been traveling with us, maybe even being the mother of Dan before something happened to her. Both points would explain the large amounts of drugs, alcohol, and even why the picture frames are face down or scratched out, so that they wouldn't have to look at them anymore, implying that they felt guilt or sorrow, and it might even explain why Dan is now so desperate to leave, willing to leave us behind in the process. Although if we did know her, it wouldn't make sense for us to bury her naked. I'm also doubtful that the game creator would make us this evil. The more reasonable answer would be that she was here the entire time, buried by someone else. Unfortunately, with the little information provided, we may never know who she is or how she got here. But where her story has ended, ours is just beginning. And so now, it's time to start the chase after Dan. Getting in the car and driving off causes the game to cut to us following closely behind the RV. Traveling through the town of Golrood, we are able to get close to the RV, but not catch it. And eventually, we lose control of the car and crash. But what caused us to crash? Fortunately, we can go back through the chase. Just before you start the crash scene, you're able to exit the car and walk around. And if you continue up the road, it becomes clear why we lose control. Someone else put this down for us to hit, possibly to get us separated. Already, something feels off. And now, I'm tasked with finding Dickhead Dan if I ever want to get my rifle back. After the wreck, we wake up in the bathroom on the second floor of the house we crashed into. How long has it been? And how did we get here? In the distance, we can hear what sounds like a plane engine. And it sounds like it's getting closer. If we hurry outside and look up, we see that it is a plane. And it's flying dangerously close to the ground. It appears that it's struggling to stay in the air. That, or the pilot is drunk. Eventually, the plane disappears behind the trees, never to be seen again. But going back inside, we notice something on the table. It's cooked mystery meat and a note that says, they all want the yellow stuff, 
don't let the fog rise. Was someone else here? Are they the reason we wake up upstairs? Did they leave this note and food for us to find as a means to warn us and help us survive? And most importantly, did they touch my ass? All of these questions will have to wait for now. We need to assess our situation. We see the direction we came from, and to the left of that is the car we fucked up. Behind that is a dirt road. This is important for later. Looking more left, we see the direction Dickhead Dan went, and if we want to find him, this is the best way to start. Not very far up the road, we find a church, where we ask Jesus for a murder weapon, but get no reply. As we leave the church, sad, we start looking around for a new religion, when we spot the RV in the distance. Walking up to it, we see that it's been abandoned, with a GPS, a note that isn't important, and a map of what looks like Florida. Outside, we spot a single chair next to a urine puddle, because Dan is a loser and has no friends. Behind the chair is a grave-like hole in the ground with a hunting rifle manual next to it. Clearly, he was here studying the rifle he stole from us. But where did he go? And why is there a grave-like hole in the ground? And what did I just step in? Aw, oh, it's shit. Further behind the house, we find a wrecked semi-truck with the passenger door open. Inside the truck is a map to the warehouse it was trying to go. Hopeful the warehouse had Twinkies inside, we follow the map to the warehouse, where inside we can see only one trailer and no Twinkies. Still holding on to hope, we break into the back and see that there's still no Twinkies because this asshole ate them all. Although, there is something strange about this guy. He's bald. We see the shovel he used to get down here, and next to it is a note that says, Possible, still alive carrier, with the picture of a house. What do they mean by carrier? And where could this house be? Curious to find out, we start searching the area around the warehouse, where we find the red plane that we saw after the wreck. So wait, we do see it again? Aw, oh, fuck it, I already recorded the voiceover. Sadly, there isn't anything around the plane that suggests what happens. The only thing we find is this pipe on a box. This pipe is more special than the others because it's curved at the end. Continuing our search leads us to a long clearing, and at the end of this clearing, we spot a house. A house that looks very similar to the one we saw in the picture at the warehouse. Entering the home, we find a go-kart that runs on piss. A note written by dickhead Dan teasing us on where he is, and another suspicious note that says, Last Sight, with a picture of three figures standing in the background. What are these things? Are they after the carrier too? This note has different handwriting and colors from the one Dan wrote, implying that it could be someone else. But pulling out the GPS, we see those coordinates are decently far away, and if we want to find Dan, we need to get going. Following the coordinates lead us to another note, but this time it isn't Dan's shitty handwriting. Instead, it looks a lot like the handwriting on the note we found at the crash house. Nice try. Take these pills and meet me behind my house. I'll need your help. Pills? What? Pills. This confirms our suspicions. Someone else has been watching us, and now wants our help for free. But who is this person? And do they have Dan? Unfortunately, we have to go all the way back to his house because this asshole couldn't leave the note at his house. After heading back to his house, we see the area he's talking about in the note. And what we see next is a bloodbath. Blood has dyed the water red, and there are bodies littered everywhere. Bodies that look exactly like the ones in the note. Next to one of them is a gun and a VHS tape. Although, whoever wrote the title on this one must have had a stroke while making it, because I don't know what the fuck it says. Further back, we can find the well from the ring. The ladder leads us to a tunnel, which ends at a canal that has a boat in it. And getting the boat out of here is a bitch, so I'm not gonna. Instead, we need to start putting some of the clues together. The tire trap in the road, the note, the dead guy with a bullet in his head, the note, the other note, this note too, and finally the VHS tape. It looks like they were attacked. Is this why they needed our help? Who is this person? And was Dan with him when they were attacked? We don't see any other bodies, so we know they were either captured or got away. But now we know two things. There is someone else who appears to be trying to help us, and a group of hazmat-wearing creatures trying to hunt us. If we go up the dirt road from the house we crashed into, we eventually run into another building that's boarded off. Breaking and entering, however, allows us to find a camera sitting on a tripod with another VHS tape next to it. This one is called Dinner 13. On the third floor, we find another note with three pictures attached, all of which are photos of houses in Golrood. Further behind the building, we see a lot of body bags, 
containers of what looks like acid, and another car that runs on piss. Watching the VHS tape, we see a man sitting in a chair who has just placed an order for a chicken salad with no lettuce. When they bring the order out to him, he sees there is lettuce in his order, and so he gets upset, throwing the chicken at the waiter, causing them to retaliate with a bullet. The man then falls back and attempts to flip the waiter off one more time before dying. We then see the body get dragged off to be processed into chicken nuggets. Going back to the three photos, two of the houses are useless. However, one has something genuinely creepy, which is actually what inspired me to make this video in the first place. Heading into the home, there is something hiding next to the stairs. A board that can be broken and leads us down into a secret room. And sitting on the bulletin board in front of us are two pictures. One of the RV that Dan was driving and one of us in the car that we were driving. Both are taken on the same date, more than likely during the chase. However, there is a third picture in the cupboard and it's of someone driving the car we found in the place we just left. Could this person have been the one helping us all along? Did he somehow get caught fighting those things at the carrier house? Further down, we find even more disturbing clues. A picture of the semi we can find in the game with a red X on the front, and on the back, it says dead. The other picture we find is of the plane that crashed, which is also crossed out on the front and says dead on the back. Both of the pictures were found attached to the bodies, indicating that the driver and pilot were found dead, or killed, and then brought here. This is serious. We know for a fact people are being hunted, and with the evidence we've found so far, it would appear that Dan and I are the only ones left to be hunted. Why are they after us though? And what do they want from us? Sadly, I don't have an answer. Only speculation. In the tunnel behind the crash house, there is a note that also says carrier with a bunch of smaller writing that seems to be talking about urge, bladder, and other various things that are hard to make out. The dead guy that ate all the Twinkies that was also murdered also had a note that said carrier. In the Golrud gas station, we find a research document stating that few individuals have the ability to produce urge, which can then be processed into fuel. But then I found something that made everything make sense, and all the puzzle pieces now fit together. And it's a clue that isn't even in the game, but in the description of the game. A world affected by a mysterious drug substance that controls everything around you. Your lid is a drug. You can drop your lid dust near an NPC and it will eat it, making them more friendly to you. It all made sense. These creatures are hunting us down because we can produce your lid and they can't. We are the carriers and they want us so they can make the drug for themselves. These specific creatures can even be seen driving vans, meaning that they are smarter and more organized than the others. And a van needs gas. We are a walking, talking drug and fuel source for these things, and they might have Dan. There is an island with a house not far from the coast of Pyrkol Van. That's why the boat was in the canal, to help us get there. But that shit takes too long to move, so we're just going to swim there. Once we get to the island, we can enter the house and see a picture showing the effects of Yurlin, meaning most of the creatures that we find in the game were once human. Searching upstairs, we find the hunting rifle the little shit stole from us. And on the balcony, there is a blank VHS tape and a black bracelet that looks like it can open Hunter Biden's laptop. Inside, we find a cassette player, where we can play the last clue. helicopter looks to be trying to land, possibly to try and pick up Dan. But shortly after he puts the camera down, we start hearing him scream, and then gunshots. At this point, it's unknown what has happened to Dan. Was he able to get away, or did the same creatures from the first attack manage to capture him? Maybe they were the ones flying the helicopter in the first place. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. If you guys have been watching this far in, clearly I've been doing something right. There's a lot of different ways to interpret the story that's happening within Urge. It took me a long time to piece all the pieces together and try to get a bigger image, and this is what I came up with. Granted, it might not be completely right or right at all, but at the same time, who cares? I mean, to my knowledge, I haven't seen anybody else do an Urge Explained, so I think I'm the first to do so. So obviously, if I'm wrong, it's it's kind of to be expected. Nevertheless, it was fun to get all the, uh, the different clues and ideas, put them together, and make it into a video for you guys to see. If you guys have your own thoughts, which I'm sure you do, please leave those down in the comments because I would love to read those. Who knows? Maybe you guys even have better ideas than I did. But if you guys did enjoy this, please hit that like button. That would help me out so much. I would greatly appreciate it. This took me probably five days. I think it was five days to, to do this. Once again, I hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one.